Hey, good morning. Morning. How's everyone doing? Morning. Better late than never, am I right? Better late than never. Hey, hi, Gabby. All right. Hey, Anya. How's everyone doing? What's everyone doing? Morning. Crocheting a Snoopy hat for a co-worker's birthday. That's cute. Where is everybody? My nephew's good. My nephew is good. Thank you for asking. It's real cute. Real, real cute. Do, 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 do. Oh, Shelly, you are here. Hi, Shelly. How's work? How's it all going? How are the clients that you didn't want to have? I'm about to leave to go have coffee with the clamp and I wanted to say hello. Oh, well, that's the answer to the question then, isn't it? They're about to happen. I'm tired, y'all. C-I-R-E-D. Morning, Hillis. Yep, and then I had three client meetings this afternoon. Oh my goodness, are you doing roll for slimes today? Yeah, later today, later this evening. I have. Uh, some stuff to do before then. Maybe I'll do some this afternoon. Do you have any fun plans this weekend? I do, I do, Shelly. We have a lot of plans this weekend. My best friend is coming into town. Hey, Shira. Yeah, my best friend is coming, um, coming down, which is fun. She's the one you went to the concert with. She is. Good memory. Hey, Micah. I'm not beverage goblining very well this morning because I left my water upstairs, but at least I have coffee. Morning, Haley. Does she get to meet Secret Boyfriend? She does get to meet Secret Boyfriend. We're all going to dinner on Sunday. It is true. Um, I don't know if there will be more autumn content, but there will definitely be more autumn. Uh, maybe there will be more autumn content. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you should get another glass of water. Maybe. Morning, ready to start the day. A O A O. We do love her. We do love her. It will be their first time meeting, which is kind of interesting. What do we think is going on with this hair? Right? Like. I will tell her about Callie being Willow's twin. She 
She is not bringing Willow. Willow, a friend of hers, is puppy sitting Willow because um, Autumn is actually coming down to LA to take a flight elsewhere. So, ooh, that didn't sound good. Um, she will not have Willow with her, unfortunately. Giving emo troll with bangs, yeah. It's called Bedhead Baby. But I don't wear this clip to sleep, so I did this afterwards, clearly, because I don't sleep in a claw clip. This is my favorite claw clip. I'm going to be, that they don't make this one, or at least this company doesn't exist anymore. So I don't know what I'm going to do if this one kicks the bucket. Morning, Abby. If slash when, you know. All right, all right. Let's get kicking. I seriously had Fiddler stuck in my head last night and from you singing to <laughs> That's pretty funny, Rosie. What is TikTok hide your lives? Tiffany, I wish I knew. We haven't started reading yet, but it TikTok has been such a hater lately. It's just like wants my account to die. That's what it really wants. Yeah. It's pretty it's pretty upsetting. Um, TikTok is definitely doing a number on, on this account. That is for sure. That is for sure. I don't know how or why. And I also don't know how I'm going to fix it. Hey, Brian. Good morning. How did Rush go? Did you get the tickets? Or is it still too early? Oh, I forgot to put my watch on. I forgot everything this morning. What? Um, hey, good morning, Susan. Um... Oh my gosh, Haley, I'm so sorry. You're seeing Sweeney, yes! Oh my gosh, Brian, I can't. That's amazing. I'm so excited. I would very much like to be seeing Sweeney. I'm not, I'm not seeing Sweeney, but I would like to be seeing Sweeney. That's awesome. Congrats. Congrats. You did it. Yay! All right, let's read because we want to get through this book so we can start that next book. Um, we are chugging along. You know, you know, you know? All right. Chapter 53. Only one person at 845, which surprised me. The line is crazy. That is weird. I just learned that Jeannie in Aladdin tour is an alum from my tiny musical theater school. That's so cool. Amazing. I'd love to see Sweeney, right? Um, so Haley, the next book is going to be the next book in the Land of Stories series. So you, you probably knew that and just didn't remember because it's not a new book. We just said we were, after we read this book too, we're going to read that book too. I already went and bought it. Actually, Shira and I went book shopping together. Um, and we bought that and then we bought another book that's going to be after that, that I haven't told you all about yet. So we're going to read book two and then we're going to read the other book that Shira and I purchased. And then, um, uh, yeah, I still haven't finished the first line of stories. Oh, Tiffany, I think you'll be able to jump in without a lot of, um, I think we could catch you up pretty easily, um, but it's up to you, obviously. Oh my God, I can reborrow the book from the library. Yes, you could reborrow the book from the library. The next title is, it's Land of Stories book two, but I don't know the exact title. I'll have to look it up. It's upstairs, but it's book two in the Land of Stories series. Yeah, it the ending, I know, I need to, re um, Tiffany, will you remind me of that later? I have to re-upload it because it wouldn't upload for some reason. I, so I have to start over with that upload. It like sat for a week spinning. It was very strange. I'll try again though, I will. I still have the video, I saved it. All right, chapter 53. Hey, wait up, Beck tabbed in. I wanna see you running half naked. Catch me then, I told her, smiling while channeling the flow of energy into my legs. In the moments where, in moments, they were overflowing with brilliant volts of beautiful blue wonderment, melting the snow around me every time they sank into it. I gave a loud echoing whoop before leaping into the air, soaring higher and higher before tucking into a ball and spinning all the way down and landing in the snow. I lay on my back almost a foot deep for, for a few minutes, relishing the power that I could now feel flowing through me. I even made a snow angel just for kicks and was in the process of swiping a finger through the snow for the hollow when Beck skidded to a halt beside me. Glad to see your artistic abilities are back, she said, curling a lip at my horrible snow angel. Enough of that, though. Let's see some lightning, handsome. I stood and looking down at my hands, curling them into fists, blue-white haze beginning to swirl around them while I let the power flow freely. Check this out, I said, shooting bolts into each other 
and pushing them back together, compressing them into the size of a baseball before rearing back and tossing them afar, as far away from us as I could. Beck's smile fell when it landed and it didn't do anything. That's really something, Jericho. And then I snapped my fingers and the miniature bomb went off, sending both of us flying backwards from the force. Whoa, what did you do? Beck said, scowling at me while dusting off her snow clothes, snow, dusting snow off her clothes. Sorry, I said, already back on my feet. We were kind of close for that one, but you get the idea. Beck stood and we walked up a small embankment, stopping at the top and watching the sun rise into a frigid morning sky. This fixes everything, she said finally, and I looked at her. You're telling me, I said, shaking my head slightly and chuckling. Don't know how we could have pulled off Killing Cross without my powers, for real. I might have started reading a couple chapters back to get my brain in good zone so with it. That's fair. You mean the powers that he gave you? It wasn't true. I knew that now. Everything Cross thought he had achieved through his vast intellect had been planned for thousands of years, well, to hear Sybil tell it. I also couldn't help but think how strange it was that Stargazer hadn't been honest with me about the whole Paladin thing. I mean, wouldn't it have been easier just to tell me everything the first day that he met me and skip the part where I'm ignorant of the truth for weeks before finding out? Eh, well, I guess the guy had his reasons, being a partisan or whatever. I'd ask Silva about it later. Cross didn't do any of this, I told her, and she frowned at me. I wasn't sure how to explain it to her since she was about as cynical as a person could be still having all her limbs attached. I heard a rumor that <laughs> they are. Um, it's linked in, in my bio, I think, Grace. There's like a little link for both Insta and YT in the bio. If not, I can send it to you if you need. But there is, there are book clubs up there. It is true. You are, you are not spreading rumors. You are... Do it a good thing. Hmm. Well, her limbs were fake because they'd been blown off years ago. Okay, I suppose she had some reason to be cynical. This is way bigger than Cross, the gauntlets, or any of it, I said. I can't explain to it all to you now, but I will after, after we paint Anchorage red and take the world over. Beck finished smiling and cocking her head to the side slightly. I smiled at that and nodded. Well, that sounds good. And thanks, by the way, for saving everyone's neck back in Vancouver. Beck waved that off and extended her howling, her hollow wings, rolling her neck once. Oh, you know, it was, um, it was on my way. And then she sprung into the air, kicking snow up all around me. I'll catch you on your way back to the car, Jericho. I was about to sit down and finish watching the sunrise when Piper tabbed me. Where are you? She sounded worried. I got my mojo back earlier this morning, I said, selecting a spinning icon and making Piper's face tab in floating above my forearm. So Beck and I went out to test everything. Piper's shocked face shifted to the left and another spinning icon appeared right at the right of it. Frowning, I tapped and Blue's face popped up next to Piper's. You got your powers back? Um, oh, it's not there anymore? That's so weird. It definitely used to be there. Hmm. Like, if you click on the little Insta icon, it used to be a drop-down. Yeah. Oh, you can see it? Okay. That's weird. I wonder why only some people can see it. Oh, good. It is there. Oh, okay, great. Oh, excellent. I'm glad to hear it. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's weird, right? It's a weird system. I'm not really sure why they did it that way. Um, weird TikTok stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I did, I said smiling. Get your suit on and we'll build a snowman together. Or we could get back on the road, Blue said, and she looked tired for some reason. If we don't die in the next few days, I'll take you up on that snowman. Before I could say that that sounds good to me, I heard something behind me and I glanced back. It had sounded like footsteps, but that didn't make any sense considering the snow and heavy wind would have masked almost any small noise like that. Weak human. My eyes widened. Whoa. It is there, I just checked. Oh cool, thank you for checking, I appreciate it. My eyes widened. Who had I just heard speak? And who 
was calling me weak. My guys, I'm, I'm going to have to call you back. I said, logging out of the chat. I will crush your bones. Clearly, whoever's thoughts I was picking up wasn't the most upstanding of people, and his voice was really deep. Oh, sorry, I was doing the wrong voice. I will crush your bones. And his voice was really deep. I followed my footprints and ended up back at the top of the snow embankment, glancing left and right to try to get eyes on whoever was watching me. Uh, I don't know who you are, but if you come out now, I won't kill you, I said loudly. No one jumped out or came out with their hands up, so to speak. I did hear more thoughts. Impossible, the deep voice said. He cannot hear me. No, like the voice was insanely deep, like someone doing a deep voice for a monster in a scary story they were telling. Well, actually, I can, I said, crossing my arms. I'm not like normal people, pal. He wears no clothes against the cold. His blood is strange and does not smell human. Huh? Whoa, hold on. He could smell my blood? The strange way the guy spoke wasn't helping me exactly pinpoint whatever ethnic group he happened to be hailing from, but if I would have had a list of folks that could smell another person's blood from far away, it wouldn't have been very long at all. Wait, what if it was the rotten people from Vancouver that had somehow followed us? I instantly lifted my hands up. Show yourself, I said, and to think I thought I was in a good mood this morning. Something moved in my peripheral, and I swung towards it, holding my hands up only to see nothing was there. And then I noticed the snow almost 50 feet away was shuddering slightly with movement, and I knew something was underneath the surface. I kept my aim on the moving whiteness until it stopped. I really don't know what I was expecting. I mean, if someone or something was lurking near the surface of the snow in negative 20 degree weather, it couldn't have been just a regular guy out for a frigid stroll. So I guess you could say I was ready for something out of the ordinary to show itself. Yeah, right. The nose came out first, followed by a four foot snout with a long row of huge teeth adorning it. When it had its head fully emerged, the wolf of the future shook its head once to rift of any snow clinging to its dark skin. And its eyes found me, lifting its lips to let a thin growl out. I sidestepped it slowly, keeping my hands aimed on the wolf, which by this time had pulled the rest of its massive body from the snow. It was a good 20 feet long and a lot taller than me, the thick ebony skin glinting against the white contrasting all around it. He is not human, the wolf thought, clamping his mouth once again in what looked like annoyance. No, I'm not, I thought. The wolf stood completely, still looking at me with new interest. I don't want to hurt you, I said to him, shutting off my hands. You seem like an intelligent mammal, so why don't we just shake hands and walk away? I grow tired of snow cats. It's been a long time since I've had the taste of human flesh. He growled again, even barked. Well, it wasn't really a bark per se, more like a small roar. You said it yourself that I'm not human anyway, I told him. Eat the next round of folks that pass through. You are not human, but the ones who travel with you are. Man, I got nothing past that guy. They're with me, wolf. And the kitchen's closed, I said, turning and walking away from him. Go back to sleep or whatever you were doing. Looking back now, I know turning my back on an ultra wolf weighing almost two tons and rocking crazy feral taste for humans wasn't the smartest thing to do. It was probably because I had just been having an actual conversation with the beast that humanized him so much I wasn't afraid of him. Maybe. Anyway... The bottom line is that when he rushed from behind, he snapped his jaws at me and I was a little surprised. He attacked on the left side so that my head and right arm were hanging out the side of his mouth when he crunched down and shook me hard. It was really scary, I'm not gonna lie. After the initial shock of the attack, I realized that it, this is what it felt like to be hugged by a sweaty person and not to be chomped on by a huge wolf. I lifted my hands and left 
uh, my left jolting the crap out of him from the inside of his mouth while I clamped down on, I clamped my right onto the beast's snout, turning on the juice. The wolf whined in pain, shaking me harder and slamming his head into the snow again and again, trying to make me stop whatever I was doing. It was almost on full blast. And so I was a little stunned that the wolf wasn't, you know, dying yet. I couldn't pick up it until you said it. Wait, what did you say? I don't know what you said, sorry. Just when the powerful animal gave one more shake before tossing me a hundred feet away, I remembered Beck telling me that these things could take a real beating. And then I was airborne. I screamed even though I wasn't in any kind of pain. And by spinning and flipping, I caught sight of the wolf running below, his head turning upward and his ears perking in expectation. You gotta be kidding. It's been so long since I've seen Never Ending Story. I've never seen Never Ending Story. Oh, I've never seen it. That's why I didn't recognize it. I got out before the wolf leaped into the air and caught me like a human frisbee. This time I felt a slight pain when one of the beast's, beast's many teeth punctured my right leg. I guess I wasn't as indestructible as I had thought, remembering that Red had been able to rip my arm clean off months ago. No, I probably won't see Never Ending Story because I really don't like puppets. You know what I mean? Um, so never ending story doesn't seem like a good one for me. It was time to end this little scuff. Both my arms were free while my legs were inside the mouth being chewed on. So I had a few more things to try this time around. Grabbing the wolf's jaw, I pried hard, opening his mouth with some kind of effort. Once my legs were free, I swiveled around and stood up, pushing the wolf's mouth off, opening it even further and looking cartoonish while holding it open. The wolf stopped thrashing around and stood there, his head hanging low and his breathing rapid. I was about to ask him if he'd had enough when my accursed boots slipped on wet wolf tongue, regaining composure before I was swallowed. But just barely. And the beast... Oh, before I was swallowed. Okay, sorry, not... He wasn't swallowed. I was like, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Now he's gonna bust out of the, the stomach of a wolf like Red Riding Hood? The beast and I resumed our standoff. After about 30 seconds in, I said, you can't kill me. False. It's true, I said, readjusting my footing again and peering down at the throat in front of me. Even if you swallow me, I would just tear my way out. The wolf was silent, so I kept on. We're kind of at a standstill here, I said. It wasn't that I was having a hard time holding his mouth open, but I was having a hard time trying to figure out how to get out of it without getting bit again. Look, if you're so set on killing me, how about you just let me out so that we can start over without you attacking me from behind? Your words are meaningless and in too great number. Wow, I'd never been burned by an animal before. He just told me that I was stupid and I talked too much in some ye old way of talking. I felt more pressure from his jaw and had to strain against them again. I do not fail in battle non-human, nor do I engage in pointless talk in the middle of one. You will die by my fangs this day, non-human. Cease your struggle and give in to the inevitable. I was about to say, and I talk too much, when I felt the first wave of heat come from the wolf's throat and hit me square in the face. At first, I thought he was just breathing harder, but the heat wave was pretty hot. Really hot. My eyes bugged when I saw the flickering light dance in the wolf's throat. The last thing I was thinking before turning the... Last thing I was thinking before the first fire blasted into me was that I wished I had really been wearing a shirt. I was shot out of his mouth like a smoking bullet, skidding onto my back and slowly melting it everywhere I touched. My foe wasted no time and jumping after me, his massive paws ready to crush me into the ground, but colliding with the force field I'd thrown up instead. Skipping off and slamming his head into it, I climbed onto my knees about the same time the wolf did, and it took the first few moments. The beast was violently attacking the impenetrable bubble around me to take stock of my chest, which was horribly burned and hurt like Helheim. 
the sizzling skin was starting to roll off my body and there was nothing I could do but sit back on my knees and take deep breaths, my hands extended away from me like I was afraid for them to touch anything while I tried not to gag on the smell of my own burning flesh. My words are true, the wolf said to me, turning his head to the side so he could get an eyeful, noting my crisp condition. He didn't sound boastful at all, but was merely stating that he had been right and that apparently I was going to die by his fangs soon. My head flew back and I clamped my eyes shut, grabbing handfuls of snow, ready to smack them against me to try and stop the searing pain. But the searing pain stopped on its own. I opened my eyes and slowly dropped my gaze back to, the, to my chest where my skin had already started to regenerate and the blackened muscles, sinews, and bones started turning a normal, healthy color. Oh crap, oh crap, I panted, not believing what I was seeing. My body came back together and in a matter of seconds, my chest was baby smooth. The wolf had stopped growling and was watching the scene before him closely. I'm thinking that he was shocked, but it was a kind of hard to tell with wolves, you know? Especially huge ones with no fur trying to kill you. Well, I said, wonder evident on my face as I peered at my chest, impossibly touching the new skin. That's a new one for me. Impossible, said the wolf. I could have sworn that he had that he shook his massive head slightly. Read him and weep, I said, getting to my feet shakily and, sh and hooking my thumbs in my regenerated, at my regenerated chest. Didn't see that one coming, did you? The small victory felt big to me since I'd been thinking about who, uh, that I was actually going to die there for a few seconds, but I didn't. Sorry, but I didn't have time to bask in the light of it because the wolf turned suddenly and locked away from me. Yeah, that's right. Run, you wimp, I called after him, putting my hands to my hips. Let me know the next time you want to get totally owned by... And then I realized the direction that he was heading in at a breakneck speed. Really? I sighed, shutting down the force field and bolting back at him. Beck, come in. She didn't answer. I flowed juice into my legs and peeled out after the wolf, which was crazy fast as it was, faster than me, so much for the glorious morning I was having. I hate the future. I tried to contact everyone back at the car with no luck. Unfreaking believable, I said when Piper didn't answer her hollow tap. I always hated it when people, ne people never answered their phones, mainly because if you do have a smartphone, it's quite impossible not to see a text or at least a missed call. So take that frustration and figure hollow tabs, a device that literally is attached to your arm at all times. Yeah, I was a little upset that no one was answering the phone so I could tell them that they were about to die. No biggie though, because I was gaining on the foul creature with my acute swiftness and I couldn't even get close to the same speed as the black demon whose snow I was eating for breakfast. I was going, to, I was going close to 40 miles an hour Jerrica? Blue chimed in. Are you close to... Blue! I shouted, glad but still annoyed that someone had finally glanced at, you know, their arm and decided to call me back. Batten down the hatches, woman. There's a wolf headed your way. Wolf? Where? The armored car came into view slightly, and I noticed the wolf was a lot closer than I was. Thankfully, it looked like no one was outside frolicking or something and was safely tucked inside. A lone wolf can easily take out a whole squad of 20 armed and armored soldiers in a matter of minutes. Oh, sorry. I read that in a very wrong voice. It was in italics, so I thought it was the wolf again, but it's definitely not. A lone wolf can easily take out a whole squad of 20 armed and armored soldiers in a matter of minutes, Beck had told me before we left Flagstaff. They can bite straight through just about anything, too, armored cars included. I wasn't fast enough, not by a long shot. The wolf would be tearing the car open in less than 30 seconds, and I, with all my great powers, would arrive too late for my friends. And if I didn't save them, our only ride might be worthless. Even if I did save them, our only ride might be worthless after the attack. You are a paladin, Sybil's voice echoed in my mind. Nice time to finally weigh in, Sybil, but this guy's a lot stronger than I am, I said quickly, running at top speed. Physically, perhaps, but his mind is not. No way, I said instantly, knowing what she was suggesting. What if you're almost out of time? 
I can't even touch him, I told her, watching the wolf close, at, close the last stretch towards the car. You do not have to, Jericho. How? I asked frantically, not caring about anything but stopping the wolf when I saw him slow his speed for a collision with the car. Sybil's next words were simple enough. Super sneak mode. That was all the incentive I needed to switch into super sneak mode, letting my empty, speeding body crumble into the snow and slide a tumble while I closed my eyes and instantly appeared between the armored car and the wolf. I spread my arms wide as the monster phased through me, and then I was gone. Weird. I'm going to stop it there today, not only because I started late, but also because there's something wrong with my brain where I feel like I'm not reading properly today, so I don't want to keep going when I'm not doing a good job, but I'll be on later for slime stuff, and um, maybe we'll make some more era slimes, we'll definitely do some more roll for slimes and all that jazz. All good things. Love you all. Uh -huh. See you later.